Well, good morning, everybody. Happy weekend. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And today, let's jump right in. Uh, I want to start the show talking about the little things, right? You know, we've all heard that phrase. It's the little things that make all the difference. You know, like basically when you don't want to spend a lot of money on a big gift for somebody, you tell them, hey, it's all about the little things, right? It's the little things that really matter. And then when when people hear that, everybody just assumes that's true. And even though, you know, we really want to get this big gift, we know we got the little things and it's the little things that really matter. So we feel good, right? Now, when I was little, uh, I always thought that the whole little things that matter line, you know, I thought that was kind of hokey. I didn't buy it because I wanted the big things. You know, I wanted nothing but the best. And I really thought mom and dad were just cheaping out on me, you know, and just telling me, feeding me this line about the little things and hoping to just get me to think, you know, tricking me into thinking I, I really got something. You know, it's the little things that matter, Danny. Well, anyway, as I got older, I matured, you know, believe it or not. This is a matured version of what I used to be. And I've come to see the truth of it. It really is. Uh, for the most part, the little things that make all the difference. Uh, big things are still pretty awesome sometimes, but the little things really can surprise you. And one of my favorite examples uh, of the whole little things thing is this. In my living room is a ridiculous pillow that makes absolutely no sense in the space. You know, picture this. The living room is painted a goldish tan, absolutely beautiful, astonishing to look at. The furniture is brown pleather, pleather. Uh, It's not leather, and it's not exactly plastic. It's kind of a finely crafted amalgamation of those two materials. Uh, And this amalgamation, the people in the furniture industry refer to as pleather. Anyway, I've got tan walls, dark brown pleather furniture, and an antique oak desk. Again, dark brown, and so on. You get the picture. And in the midst of all of that... On one of those pleather chairs that I was telling you about, there sits this pink, you know, crazy pink, bubblegum pink, shiny pink sequin pillow. It's a small pillow, you know, maybe a foot square, something like that. And it sparkles like crazy in the light. Absolutely crazy. It's hideous. It's garish. It's jarring to look at. It's clearly cheaply made. And it's one of my favorite presents of all time. See, my daughter Maddie gave it to me. It was a Christmas present a couple years back, and it didn't arrive in time. So I received it about two weeks late, and Maddie spent all the time leading up to Christmas and all the time leading up to the arrival of the present really telling me and building up how amazing this present was. She was so thrilled with it. And really, despite my age, she got me all giddied up. I was pumped. You know, presents are my thing. I love giving them, and I love getting them. And I got really, really, really excited. And of all the kids, uh, Maddie had money. Uh, She'd been working uh, a fair amount at that point, and she's a saver. So this gift could be really good, really nice, really expensive. And so I was excited. I was pumped. And then the present arrived, and I came home from work one day to find this little square package waiting for me, you know, all wrapped up. Maddie's pumped. She's excited. Everybody's gathered around. Something out of a movie is what it felt like. Well, I grabbed the box. I said, Maddie, you shouldn't have spent so much on me. And I started opening the thing. And that's when I saw the sequined pillow. You know, that horrible, pink, ridiculous sequined pillow. And I had no idea what in the world was going on at this point. But I'm smart enough to think on my feet. So I acted excited and I laughed uh, because Maddie was laughing. And I figured this was some kind of joke that I didn't get yet. Uh, And then Maddie said, brush the sequins. Brush the sequins. And I must have looked completely stupid because she reached out and brushed at a corner of the sequins on the pillow to show me how to do it. Well, when she did that, I looked and I saw that the sequins flipped back and they revealed another color underneath. So still confused. I started brushing them back. And as I did so, I revealed this life-sized photo of Maddie's face smiling with this ridiculous grin. It was the funniest present that I've ever received. And now it sits in a place of honor on my pleather chair. Uh, I've been given many more expensive presents by Maddie over the years, but that one present really hits me as the best, the absolute best. So much humor and personality were wrapped up in that one dumb little pillow. You know, the little things. Often it's the little things that really count, right? The things that really make a difference. And that brings me to the paint point for the week. 
Often on the show, we talk about big projects and huge undertakings. You know, whole house generators last week, uh, painting your exterior, you know, the exterior of your home, or installing quartz countertops, painting kitchen cabinets, you know, big stuff. And of course, those big projects have big payoffs. But I wanted to take a step back this week and point out that there's a lot of power in little projects, you know, in the little things. And I'm not saying that the little things have more power than the big things. You know, when it comes to home projects, I don't think that's probably true. It's wishful thinking, but I don't think it's true. The little things, though, they are important. They're accessible. They're doable. So much more so than big projects. And when you realize that these little projects can have a big time impact, well, you begin to see that even on a time crunch or a budget crunch, you can still make big impact improvements to your home. And that's pretty exciting. Now, many of us have big projects that we'd love to tackle. But right now, you know, maybe they seem financially out of reach for you. You know, with the holidays approaching, car payments, the cost of groceries, unexpected expenses. You know, I just put in a new furnace and air conditioner, completely unexpected. With those things, with medical bills, it can really feel overwhelming. Not to mention the time constraints that we get from work and family life. You know, big projects seem out of reach sometimes. Now, if you relate to this, if any of that makes sense to you, you're nodding your head even a little, there's good news. And really, that's what this show is all about, right? It's delivering the good news. Well, in, in this instance, the good news is that there are many little projects that you can tackle that will have a huge impact on your home. They're not going to drain your wallet or take weeks to complete, and yet they can transform your space into something that more closely resembles the vision that you had for your home. Now, today's show is going to focus on a bunch of these little projects, specifically within the bathroom, you know, just to give me a space, a specific space to work in. But many of these ideas are going to apply really to any room of your home. Now, you don't need to have huge amounts of money and time to make big changes. We can update our homes and make big impact improvements for chump change in sometimes 10 minutes of work. So remember, sometimes the little things can have a huge impact. That's the pain point for today. Now we're going to take a break. When we return, we're going to explore nine simple updates that can completely transform your bathroom. Stick around. And we're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show. And today we're talking about the little things, you know, the little projects, the little updates that matter. And specifically, we're looking at these in terms of updating a bathroom. But, like I said in the last segment, you can apply these projects, many of them, not all of them, certainly not all of them, but you can apply many of them all over the house. All right, let's get started. And let's start here. What does your bathroom look like? You know, is it the paradise on earth that you'd like it to be? Is it a place of comfort and peace? Is it ready for guests who are going to be coming soon as the holidays draw closer? What's it look like? Now, when I think about mine, won't, 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 yikes. You know, I've got two bathrooms and neither one is anything to write home about. They're not exactly, you know, pits of despair. They're functional. They do their thing. I don't cry when I'm in them, but they could certainly be better. You know, I would certainly want to do a few things before I had guests coming to use them on a regular basis. Even now, when I do have the random guest that shows up and they announce uh, or ask, do you have a restroom? Well, nobody asks that. They all assume that we've got a restroom in the house. They'll say, where's the bathroom or whatever. I've got to use the bathroom. And there's always this this inner fear (laughs) that somebody's going to walk into the bathroom and judge me harshly because it's not a place you want to spend a lot of time. Anyway, that's my bathroom. You know, that's what I've got going on. But here's the thing. You know, I want to fix them. I want to change them. But I personally don't have a lot of extra budget right now for bathroom remodels. And I certainly don't have a lot of excess time. So what in the world can I do? Well, happily, there are a lot of simple updates that will dramatically improve our bathrooms in an economical manner and without requiring huge time commitments. And I hinted at it earlier, but seriously, if you entertain guests for Thanksgiving or Christmas, here's perhaps a startling fact for you. Uh, We have, as of right now, 33 days, 33 days until Thanksgiving and 60 days until Christmas. So if you've got a bathroom that's drooping a little bit and you've got guests coming over in the next few weeks, or if you just want to make your bathroom nice for you and your family, you know, that's my boat. Here are some ideas that might help you get there. And let's just start. The very first update project that I want to talk about is what what a big surprise this is going to be, painting the walls. You know, that's the big first project that we're going to talk about. And maybe you might think of this one as a bigger project. 
or maybe a project on the more expensive side. But remember, we're just talking about the bathroom here. It's a small space. A gallon of paint is going to cover, on average, about 400 square foot with one coat. So you're not looking at too much paint here. And as for impact, there really isn't much bigger bang for your buck uh, when it comes to projects than painting. And if you don't believe me, Google it. Just right now, type in your phone. Search for the best bang for your buck home improvement projects. And when you do that, a new coat of paint on the walls is going to be in the top three almost every time if it's not the first one uh, that's suggested. It's just, you know, economically speaking, you're going to get the best bang for your buck with that kind of a project. And that's because nothing, you know, really helps set the tone, I guess is the way to say it, the tone or the atmosphere of a room. Nothing sets that more than the color on the walls. So one really straightforward project with a big payoff is to freshen up the paint in your bathroom. But I can't just leave it at that and get to the other projects. It's a bathroom. And there are definitely some things to keep in mind before I run on to the next thing. And first off, when you're doing any painting, we talk about it on the show all the time, but when you're doing any painting at all, prep work is key. It's, it's absolutely foundational. Uh, but in a bathroom repaint, it's even more important uh, to make sure that you do this right. So make sure that the walls are washed really well. There are a lot of contaminants in a bathroom, hairspray, all kinds of different things that can end up on the walls. So wash the walls with a good cleaning agent like Challenger or Spray 9. We carry both of those. You could use Dawn dish soap. But wash those walls really well with that. And you might want to scrub them slightly with a Scotch Bright pad, you know, one of those little green pads, little green scrubbies that you use for your dishes. If you're one of those people who don't have a dishwasher, like the Hanson clan, we've got little scrubbies that we use. Everybody's got their own personalized scrubby. Get new scrubbies. Don't use your, your scrubbies that you use for your dishes. Get a new Scotch-Brite scrubby and use that to wash the walls. It'll help cut through some of those contaminants. So wash the walls really well and then wipe them clean with a damp rag and then let them dry. Now, if you've got nail holes that need filling, do that now with a lightweight spackling compound. And if the walls are shiny, you know, it's a bathroom, it's possible. In fact, it could be likely that there, there's a fair amount of shine on those walls. If there is, you really want to make sure that you do a light scuff sanding with a 180 grit sandpaper. You need to create a surface profile. That's what you're looking for here for that new paint to adhere to. So do that scuff sanding, and once you're done with that, wipe the walls with a damp rag to remove the sanding dust and then let them dry. All right, if you do happen to, you know, in the course of all of that work, it's not terribly uncommon that you might stumble into mold or mildew. Now, if you do find those things, you absolutely need to deal with those. Uh, clean those areas with bleach and water, you know, a bleach and water solution, and that will kill the mold and mildew, and then you should be able to paint over it. However, you do want to make sure that there isn't a bigger problem going on that's causing those problems. You know, it could be just poor ventilation, maybe not using your fan, maybe your bathroom fan isn't working well. You know, that could be leading to the issue, but it could be something bigger than that. It could be a leak or something along those lines. So make sure that you know what caused the mold and mildew before you completely move on, because if you don't fix that core problem, uh, it's just going to be a continuing problem down the road. And you don't want to be dealing with a, a mold problem uh, in any regard in your home. So if you do see mold, you definitely need to figure that out. Mildew on the surface, most likely it's a ventilation thing. Still, clean it off, kill it with the, the bleach and water solution, and you'll be good to go. If you have more questions about that, swing into any Repcolite, and we'll walk you through what you need to do to get those walls ready for paint. All right, once you've got all of that done and you're ready for paint, I'd recommend using Aura Bath & Spa from Benjamin Moore. It's specifically designed for moisture-rich environments uh, like a bathroom. And as a bonus, at least to me, it comes in a matte finish. You know, when you use Aura Bath & Spa, you're going to get great coverage. You're going to get supreme resistance to moisture and all of the problems that moisture can cause. And you're going to get all of that with a matte finish, which means that your walls don't need to be overly shiny. Now, some people like that. Other people, you know, that, that's a real bummer for people when they get to painting their bathroom. Before Aura Bath & Spa, before we had that as an option, we always had to steer people to shinier finishes because that will resist that moisture better. But a lot of people didn't want to go to those shinier finishes. They're a little trickier to work with. They show more inconsistencies on the walls, more imperfections. A matte finish is just softer on the eyes. You see the color better, and it hides those imperfections. So Aura Bath & Spa, you can use that. It's my favorite bathroom paint, 
It's going to be a silver bullet. It's going to resist all the problems that water can cause in a bathroom, and it does it with a matte finish. Now, if you don't want the matte finish, that's all right. There are other options out there that, that have a shinier finish. I know there are people who just like that shinier look in the bathroom. We've got products that will do that. Just stop out at any Repco Light. Tell us what you want, and we'll get you the right product. All right, one last thing to say about all of this, painting the bathroom walls. One last thing is that color matters a little more than you may think in the bathroom. Now, it's not rocket science here, and to some people, this is crazy obvious, but you could pick a color in the bathroom that looks great in your bathroom, but which, you know, often combined with your lighting, can make you personally, me, can make us look terrible in the mirror. No lie, certain colors can make us look sickly or washed out or way worse than we really look in real life. And some of us, some of us need all the help we can get. The last thing we need is the paint color on our bathroom walls working against us. We need everything aligning in our favor to be able to go out into the world and feel okay about ourselves. We don't need the color hurting us. So when it comes to picking your paint color, here are just a few quick things to consider. And of course, these are for every space, but the bathroom being a smaller space and a space in which we typically view ourselves in a mirror, you know, that all makes these considerations a little more critical. All right, first, when you're choosing your color, consider the lighting. If your bathroom has a lot of natural light, you can choose a bolder color. In low light bathrooms, you might wanna opt for lighter shades just to keep the space feeling a little more bright. Next, be aware that warmer tones like soft beiges, warm whites, light taupes, even pinks can create a welcoming atmosphere without making you look washed out in the mirror. One of Benjamin Moore's color trend colors for 2025 is called Tissue Pink. Terrible name. I hate that name. Tissue Pink. I don't want to paint a wall tissue pink. Not at all. Not at all. No, I was trying to think if there was a possibility that I could. No, I hate that name. But it's a decent color. And when it's paired with warm lighting, it's great for a bathroom or a powder room. So keep that in mind. Cooler tones like icy blues or grays, they can end up casting unflattering tones on our skin, so can certain greens. And really, that shouldn't come as a surprise. You know, enough green in a small space that's usually pretty well lit is going to end up bouncing around the room, right? It's going to cast us in this green glow in the mirror, and it's possible, maybe, maybe likely, that we're going to end up looking seasick all the time that we're in there. So you don't want that. If you want to use cool tones, a soft shade of blue could be a good compromise. So think about that. If you're bound and determined that you're going to use bold colors, even if you don't have great lighting in there, bring those bold colors in with accents and with art. You know, that keeps them more controlled and easy to tweak if you need to. Finally, last thing I'll say about color is that you should try it out in your lighting. We say that all the time, but try the color out. Don't just buy it and put it on and hope for the best. Sample it. Make sure that you're seeing it in your lighting. You can get Benjamin Moore color samples of any of the Benjamin Moore colors. Uh, they're about six bucks, and that's going to give you enough paint to brush on a piece of foam board and then look at it at different times of the day in your space. It's a great way to go. And right now, I want to make sure I mention this, right now until the end of October, you can get a free Benjamin Moore color sample of any one of the 10 Color Trends 2025 colors at RepcoLite. Now, that includes Benjamin Moore's Color of the Year Cinnamon Slate, and it also includes that tissue pink color that I don't like the name of, but the color's all right. Uh, if you want to get a sample of that for free, you can do that. Now, that free color sample offer is only good for one of those 10 color trend colors, and it ends October 31. So check that out. We've got more info at RepcoLite.com uh, if you want more information on that. All right. That's my long-winded first recommended project to update your bathroom. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll keep going with the rest of these on the other side. Stick around. We're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, and we're working our way through what I feel is a list of small, reasonable updates that we can make to our bathrooms. You know, these are meant to be relatively, relatively little things that shouldn't cost too much money or take too much time, but which can still, you know, have a big impact on the space. Now, last segment, I spent a fair amount of time talking about painting the walls. The rest of these aren't going to take that much time, I promise. But there was a ton of info that I wanted to cover before I felt comfortable dropping that topic. So I took the time. Now, if you still have questions about a bathroom repaint, just swing into any Repco Light location and we'll walk you through it. 
All right, let's move on. The second bathroom project that I'm going to recommend is, and I feel really bad about this one. I do. I do. I really do. But the second one is paint the cabinets, which is different from the first one, which was painting the walls. But yes, it is still more painting. Uh, but hang with me here. It can make a huge impact. And even though you're painting cabinets, which, you know, a lot of us it's not our favorite thing to think about. You know, you're painting cabinets here. But remember, it's bathroom cabinets, and there aren't nearly as many of them as there are in a kitchen. It's a great way to dabble with a cabinet repaint and see if that's something you want to tackle on a bigger scale in your kitchen. All right? So bathroom cabinets. I think that's a great one. Uh, and, of course, just like the walls, prep is crazy important here. And I will spare you the details of all of that. Uh, if you are interested in this project, just stop out at any RepcoLite location and we'll walk you through it. Or you can email me at radio at RepcoLite.com and I can give you a detailed walkthrough so you know exactly what you need to do. Now, when it comes to recommended paint products for a bathroom cabinet project, I'd recommend Benjamin Moore's Advance. It's absolutely ideal. It self-levels beautifully, whether you brush it or roll it, and you're going to end up with a remarkably smooth finish. It's almost, almost going to look sprayed. Uh, it cleans up with soap and water, but it's actually what's called a modified alkyd. And that's just a fancy way of saying that it has some of the durability characteristics of an oil and some of the application characteristics of an oil, but with faster dry times and soap and water cleanup like a water-based product would. So that's Advance from Benjamin Moore. That's a great product for cabinets. Uh, another option for cabinets would be Repcolite's Optima, a water-based product, hold up really well on your cabinets and a great price point. Again, before you jump in, stop out at any Repco Light for a breakdown on the steps or send me an email and I'll get you a step-by-step -step guide. Radio at RepcoLite.com. All right, moving on. Third little project. And we're going to finally break out of the paint world here. Uh, upgrading your bathroom fan. It's another game changer for your bathroom. And it sounds boring as can be. I get that. But it's a big deal. You know, a quieter fan that effectively removes moisture can make a world of difference in your bathroom. And if you want to figure out the right size fan for your space, it's really simple. It's a simple formula, and it's based on the room's square footage. Basically, you need to get a fan that has a CFM rating, which stands for cubic feet per minute. That's how they're rated. Get a fan that has a CFM rating that's equal to the square footage of your room. So if you've got an 80 square foot bathroom, you're going to need a fan rated for 80 CFM. All right, so really easy. Make sure you get the right size fan, get that installed. And for a lot of you, probably, you know, installing a new ceiling fan is a simple project. You know, others may need to get an electrician out there. And if that's the case, that definitely does make the project a little bigger. But like I said, it's still a great update for a bathroom. It's not fancy. It's not visual, like new colors on your walls or your cabinets, but man, let me tell you, when a guest walks into my bathroom, one of the fans, I've got two bathrooms, one of the fans is so loud that it's startling at first. And then eventually, you just start to feel it buzzing, you know, deep down in your chest and brain, and it kind of lulls you into this state of disconnection. It's very strange. We can feel it through the whole house. The whole house reverberates when the fan's on. It, it's strange. It's powerful. It's not very nice. All right, that's one bathroom. The other bathroom fan, man, that one's sneaky. It's more diabolical. It's perfectly quiet about 60% of the time, and about 35% of the time, it makes kind of a slight humming sound, you know, barely audible. So that's 95% of the time, it's clicking along just fine. And then there's that remaining 5%. And in that time, it screams like a banshee. And let me tell you, it never builds to the scream. The scream just starts, you know, full-throated scream out of the blue. And it's going to change your world when it happens. It is so embarrassing when guests are over and that happens. It's terrifying when it happens to us. You know, you're just sitting there calm. You're at peace. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the fury of what sounds like a thousand deceased souls is screaming at you from just overhead. And all I can say is when that happens, you're usually sitting in the right spot. Uh, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. The point is a bathroom fan is a great thing. It's not flashy, but a quiet fan gets used more often, which is really good. And a good fan is going to move moisture regularly out of your bathroom. And that's going to prevent or at least hamper the growth of mold or mildew and all of those things. It's going to keep your paint looking better longer. So a good bathroom fan, go for it. 
Fourth update. Uh, add some fun wallpaper. And this one's a little surprising. It can absolutely be done, but you do need to do it right. You know, a lot of people think you can't do wallpaper in a bathroom. You can, but you do need to do it right. And you got to be aware that some papers are going to be better, you know, better suited for these spaces than others. For example, there are vinyl wallpapers that are water resistant. Those would be ideal. But other papers can work. Really, a lot depends on your situation. Make sure you install the paper the right way. Keep it away from the area above the shower. Use a wall sizer or appropriate primer. Make sure that you have a bathroom fan installed and that you run it. You know, again, like we just talked about, make sure that bathroom fan's there. Make sure you're running it and all of those things. If you do those, you definitely can have success with paper in the bathroom. And I know it can be done because I had it on my bathroom walls for years, about 20 years ago or more probably, probably more than that. Doesn't matter, that's the old person ramble. Gotta stop that. Doesn't matter if the car was red or green, Grandma. It hit you, you know, let's not worry about the color of the car. Anyway, I just did that and exposed my age. Anyway, about 20 years or more ago, we had the paper installed on the upper third of the bathroom walls. The rest of the space, the walls were um, beadboard, all right? Paper didn't go around, you know, the area above the tub surround. We didn't put it there. My kids splashed a ton in the tub, and the bathroom usually got pretty steamed up after showers. But with all of that said, the paper lasted for years. In fact, I never had peeling problems at all. Now, that's not always going to be the case, and certain papers just won't hold up well in damp environments. But it is possible to bring paper in, especially if you just use it on a single accent wall. Now, wallpaper can instantly take a space to another level. And if you hate the very idea of wallpaper, because I know a lot of people do, uh, if that's you, if you're one of those people hating the idea of wallpaper, I'm betting, I can't be sure, but I'm betting that you haven't looked at many patterns recently. Now, there are so many options out there covering so many different design styles. It's really crazy. You know, you can flip through books at some of our stores and you see patterns that you can't believe. The color combinations are great. The visuals are great. These are pieces that can completely change a room. And that idea fits really nicely into this small changes, little updates concept that we're focusing on. It's not going to take much paper in a bathroom to make a huge difference. So if you're interested, even a little, in exploring paper options for a bathroom, stop out at one of our stores with a paper library and then just have that conversation. Tell us what you're working on and we can direct you to the right papers to consider and also walk you through the correct installation techniques to make sure you get the best results. Now, those Repcolite locations uh, that have paper are the Byron Center location, the Broadmoor, Fulton Street, and Plainfield Avenue locations in Grand Rapids, 17th Street and Lakewood Boulevard in Holland, the Kalamazoo Repcolite, if you're out there, that location has a library for wallpaper books, and on the east side of the state, the Repcolite locations in Birmingham, Farmington Hills, and Gross Point all have wallpaper. I've got all of that info at repcolite.com. All you need to do is click the wallpaper banner on the homepage and check it out. All right, so wallpaper in a bathroom. Uh, I think what I want to do is take a break at this point because I've got five more that I want to get through. And yeah, I think the best way to do that is to take a break right now and pick this up on the other side. Stick around. And we're back at it. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And we're hitting the end of our episode on the little things. You know, it's the little things that matter, right? Uh, we, we spent the whole episode talking about that. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, I, I completely get it. You know, big home projects have a huge payoff. There's no disputing that at all. All I'm saying is that little projects, little updates, they can have a surprisingly powerful impact as well. And that's what we've been focused on today, little projects that make a difference. And I basically dialed in on the bathroom, partly because it gave me a specific room you know, to talk about, and that makes the conversation flow just a little bit better, but also partly because a bathroom is the perfect room to look at when you're talking about little updates. And really, it's because it's generally one of the littler rooms in our homes. Uh, it's a big impact space, but it's small enough that a few changes can really start to push that space in completely new directions. Directions. And I guess one other reason I talked about bathrooms or picked bathrooms is because I really don't know many people who don't want to change something. 
in their bathroom. You know, very few people that I've run into have created the perfect oasis there. You know, pretty much any help, any ideas are usually welcome when it comes to bathrooms and small spaces. So anyway, that's what I picked. We've covered the first five simple updates that I had on my list. I've got five to go. Let's get right back to it. And my fifth idea is this, replace the shower head. Uh, it's usually, again, I said these were easy. I didn't say these were, you know, uh, the work of riot, rocket scientists. This is easy stuff. Replace the shower head. It's usually as easy as unscrewing the old one and screwing on a new one. Uh, sometimes you need plumber's tape. Sometimes you don't. It depends on the shower head that you purchase. So read the little instruction packet for installation. But crazy easy. You barely need tools for it. And it can make a big difference. You know, we did this at our house and it's really, maybe it's pathetic. You know, I like to use the word amazing, but it might just be pathetic uh, what a difference it made. You know, we went from a little standard boring mineral deposit encrusted shower head to a much bigger one with options. You know, you could click it and it would do different things. Everybody in the house felt like we were showering in the Ritz for a while. You know, the Ritz. If that's still a fancy place to go, to hang out, to shower, I don't know, that's what it felt like at our house. It felt like the Ritz, all for the price of a $20 shower head and a five-minute switcheroo. So think about that. But don't stop there. You know, look at other things that you can swap out as well. Shower hooks and rings, towel racks, even the toilet paper holder. Uh, don't forget about drawer pulls and cabinet knobs. You know, these little details can really elevate your bathroom's look. And while hardware for cabinets is usually you know, really expensive. Again, in this instance, you're just doing a bathroom. It's a small space. You won't need that much. And you'll be surprised, really surprised at the difference new hardware makes, especially if you choose to paint your cabinets. But even if you don't, new hardware almost is magical. That sounds really corny. Um, it's got a superpower. That's the way I'd like to say it. It's got a superpower of making the cabinets themselves look new. Did this at my old house, and I was blown away. My little brass knobs that we had that had, I don't know, some little ceramic piece in the middle that had a little blue flower painted on it. You know, pretty old school stuff. We swapped them out for a burnished bronze uh, at that point, and man, did everything look different. Cabinets looked Really, they looked new in in a sense. So if you're painting the cabinets, if you're not painting the cabinets, think about swapping out that hardware. Maybe that could make a big difference for very little money. All right, let's keep going. Another project, a little on the larger side, is this one. Consider adding beadboard or wainscoting. You know, it's a classic touch, can add character to the space. Uh, if you're thinking about doing that, when you're deciding on the height, you know, that's really the, the main question with beadboard or wainscoting, deciding on the height. Uh, when you're doing that, think about the proportions of your room. For a smaller bathroom, you're probably going to want to keep that wainscoting around the 38 to 42 inch height. Uh, so keep it right around that zone. This is roughly going to be about a third of the wall height, and it's pretty standard. That's usually the way to go. If the bathroom's a little bit bigger, you know, if it's on the larger side, you could possibly go up to the 48-inch height. But typically, it's not recommended that you're going to go much higher than that in a bathroom setting. So wainscoting, beadboard on the walls. For materials, there are moisture-resistant options out there that you can look at. Wood that's properly painted also is going to work really well. So if you're on the handy side uh, and you're comfortable with a project like that, Something to think about. Another one, moving quickly, light fixtures. Uh, another really easy update. For some people, it's going to be easier than others. You know, you might need, again, maybe you've got to get an electrician out there to make that swap. Uh, for a lot of people, that's something they'll tackle. Do it carefully. You know, I don't give out any advice on, on, on electrical stuff on the radio. Uh, it's not my gig. I have an electrician's son that I bring in to do all of my work. But I do know, regardless of how you get that put up there, new lighting can really brighten up, ha, 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 brighten up the space. It's really going to change things, and it's going to enhance the overall feel. You know, I've got to do that with mine. The light fixture that I've got in there, mm-mm, the 80s called and turns out it wants my light fixture back, and I've got to take care of that. I'm not going to wait around till it becomes popular again. That thing's got to go. So that's on my list, and I, like I said, I've got that electrician kid who can take care of it for me. All right, so there's another one. A new shower curtain. Easy stuff here. 
Again, it's not rocket science, but a new shower curtain is crazy quick, it's really affordable, and it's going to refresh the whole bathroom style, perhaps. I mean, it depends on what you go with, but there's a lot of a lot of power with something like that because there's a lot of surface area that it covers. So look into a new shower curtain. You know, I saw one not too long ago that I think was um, Jeff Goldblum. You know, just a great big enormous Jeff Goldblum. And I don't know that I need that in my bathroom, but there's a lot of things you could pull off with a shower curtain. So think about that. That would be an easy one. How about this one? Not quite as easy, but talk about a difference change the toilet. Now, I said all along that a lot of these could be used in other rooms. Uh, This is the one that I can't imagine can be used in another space other than a bathroom. You know, even the shower curtain, I I believe, I'm thinking of somebody right now, I'm not going to say his name, but um, my daughter's fiance, he's got a new house and he's got, I think he's the one with the Jeff Goldblum shower curtain and he's got it hanging in his basement as wall art. So you could even use the shower curtain somewhere else if you're really crazy and you really want to push boundaries. The toilet, I don't want to go anywhere that's got a toilet in the living room. I don't think. Boy, I don't know. I might want to think about that. I can't think so. I can't think so. I think that really needs to be in the bathroom. So anyway, change the toilet. That's my greater point here. Uh, I know it does sound like a big job. You know, it's not not just like hanging a picture on the wall, but it is a manageable, you know, DIY project. And most of us know somebody who's tackled this particular project before. And maybe if you're really nice, you offer them a beverage of some sort, maybe a donut. Maybe they'd be willing to come over and help you do yours. Uh, If not, watch some videos online and just check it out. See if it's something you feel comfortable doing. If not, hiring a pro, that's always an option. But regardless, however you get that in, a new toilet is a big change for a bathroom. You know, we replaced ours a few years back, uh, switching from short, old-fashioned toilets to larger, modern ones. Uh, It's so much more comfortable, though I joke now that my legs swing. You know, when I sit there, my little legs don't touch the, my feet don't touch the floor. My legs never touch the floor. They shouldn't touch the floor. Feet need to touch the floor, not legs. But my feet don't touch the floor anymore. They swing around, but that's okay. The flushing power on the toilet, crazy impressive. I mean, I could theoretically flush a range bucket of golf balls if I wanted to. Not that I ever would. I can't imagine a scenario where that would be required or even desired, but I could if I wanted to. And that alone, that makes me happy. You know, this update, that toilet update to my bathroom dramatically improved both the function and the aesthetics of our space. It's one of my favorite things that I've done and it didn't really take me too long and it wasn't too over the top expensive. I mean, toilets aren't free, but still the the amount of impact that you get from it, the change from it, definitely something to think about. All right, last one, last bathroom update idea, and this one's a little bit controversial. Uh, Hang some art in the bathroom. And it's controversial really for the same reasons that the wallpaper suggestion raises eyebrows. You know, bathrooms are full of heat and humidity, and those things aren't typically great for wallpaper or for art. A lot can go wrong, and you run the risk of damaging the art that you hang up. Uh, But like wallpaper, it can absolutely work if you do it right. You know, use the right materials, the right art, the right frames, and so on. Do that, and it can work. Now, next week, I've got a full segment about everything that you need to know to bring art into the bathroom and have no problems. But I don't have time for that this week. That's coming up next week. My greater point here is to just throw out the idea that the bathroom can be a canvas for more than just the usual bathroom-themed decor. You know, an unexpected art piece in a bathroom that can really push the room in a new direction. And like all of the other updates that we talked about, it's crazy simple, crazy small. It takes almost no time to hang something up. But who knows? That one little item you find and hang up could completely revitalize that bathroom space and launch you in an entirely new direction. Now, that was the point of all of this today. If you're finding it tougher to jump into the big projects, never forget the power of the little stuff. And if any of your little projects do involve paint, we'd absolutely love to help. Just swing by any Repco light and tell us what you're working on we'll get you moving in the right direction. All right, that's going to do it. If you want to catch this one again, you can find it online at repcolite.com. Whatever you do today, make sure paint's a part of it. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you next week. I'm Dan Hansen. Thanks for listening.